Hello. Plug in our guest. How is everybody? Hey, Vish. Plugging this in. Let our friends join in. How's everybody doing? It is Monday. Let's make this a little brighter. How's everyone doing? We're just gonna wait for Natalia to join. We're gonna talk about some voting. Very excited. Perfect. Oh yeah. Oh, hi. hi. What's Hello. up? You always have the cutest headbands every time we talk. We talked about this. I know. Are you getting I know. one? Did you get this? Uh, yeah, so I got I got a big but see you really rock the big ones. I think it's because you have big hair and like it's like you know like messy and cool. I feel like it makes my head it does it's not flattering on my head. No. Incorrect. I don't know. You look way cuter in them. I should go grab mine, but get whatever. It. Do you want to do it? <laughs> you always look so cute. How are you? Hi. Do you want to get it? Yeah, it's like upstairs somewhere. Okay. All right. It'll well, take hi, too long. Everyone. How hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy hi, Monday. Guys. Natalia and I, I have been trying to, we've been trying to do this for like three months, so this is very exciting that it's finally happening. It's so hard, like even though we're home all day, you would think that you would have so much more time, and somehow we just don't. <laughs> we don't. Well, yeah. just to start, do you want to introduce yourself and just give a little, because you do so many things, a woman of many talents, and I feel like you do so many incredible things. So maybe just like a little oh. sneak peek. Oh, cool. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Natalia. And let's see, I am an actress turned political scientist, activist. Um, my thing is really... Um, I just want to make kind of like Missy, what you do, just make um, information and education fun. So I do, uh, I do like politics and civics and history videos on my Instagram. I work at a political think tank, so I like to share a lot of the information that I'm learning, um, learning there, and kind of translating it in a way that all of us understand. So uh, I'm really excited to be here, and I think that we. We're, we have very, very many similarities in terms of our passions and how we express it through our work. Um, so that's why we connected. So how did you even start on this journey? Just to get a little personal with you for a second, because yeah. you formally, professionally, and still are an actress, but how do you parlay yeah. that into this activist career that you have now? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because I never imagined that I would be. I started acting when I was so young and that was, you know, the only thing I ever imagined myself doing. And when I went to college, I studied political science. And then I interned at the think tank where I now work, the Bruin Institute. And it just completely changed my life. It opened up so many doors and um, I guess mental doors more than anything. And I just found myself becoming more and more interested in that line of my work. And um, find, and now my goal really is to find a way to merge those two passions. So using film and media and um, and the creative world, essentially, um, as a vehicle for education and making it fun. I love that. Oh, I was making sure you were pinned, just in case people were just joining. So ah. how, so many questions for you, and I'm so excited to talk. And for people just joining, Natalia is here. <laughs> Natalia is here. Sorry, hello, hello, I'm here. And we're here to just have a conversation and get everyone really excited and empowered to vote, to know what yes. you're voting for. And just, I think just energizing everybody because we are in the final weeks, two, 15 days before the election. And we just wanted to have a conversation, yeah. also reconnect because we love each other and wanted to just have yeah. a chat. But yeah. um, why do you think it's so important to use media? Because I think this has almost become this new uh, platform for people like Instagram is almost now turned into this incredible way to break down information that you can't get on the yeah. news. So I find what, that, right, like, right. So why is that important to you? And what are some findings that you've had personally in doing this work? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Actually, I 
I feel like people have a love hate relationship with social media. And I understand why it can, you know, all of us can, right? Why it can be stressful and overwhelming. And there are, there are a lot of negative aspects to it. But at the same time, just like anything, on the flip side, there's so many amazing possibilities. And I think what we've seen, especially this year between um, all the creativity uh, that emerged during the beginning stages of quarantine and then all the activists, activism that came about during the BLM, you know, at the height of that movement as well. And now with voting, um, just getting the message out. I think that, that the constraints on Instagram, for example, they force you to be really creative. So you have to find a way to articulate a message in a way that's like concise, engaging, and still informative. And it's totally possible. And then you can always send people for more information. All of the videos that I do, I have a link, you know, with all of my sources. And if you want to go deeper, I, I guide you in that direction. But at the end of the day, like people, you know, it's a lot of work, you know, to be completely to be fully informed. And so many people want to be informed, but they don't know where to go. And social media has been this place where you can find the people that you trust to kind of do that work for you. Mm -hmm. And, and the news is so like, blanket statement, you know, kind of speaking to everyone, and it has its purpose as well. But I think for, for our generation, um, we, for m many reasons, you know, don't trust everything that's out there. And I think finding, you know, I have I have my go to news people, Jessica Yellen, for example, and like, they love you. Like, she's amazing, right. And, and these are people you can find someone that you trust, whose ideas you connect with and um, and get really informed in a way that that is personal for you. So I think it's I think it's amazing. And, and the pros totally outweigh the cons. I entirely agree. And obviously, I'm, I'm sure we all get these kind of weird messages and comments. But I think the the rewards far outweigh the negatives, yeah. as you said, but just Leading up to the election, so like, let's go right there. What is something everyone should know right now? And how, what do you think is the best way to use your energy in these next 15 days? Yeah, I know some of us were, were probably so sick of hearing this and it's exhausting and you're just over it, but do not give up now. Like we're almost at the end of it. It is so, so important that we not only vote, but that we encourage all the people around us to vote. So, you know, there you can uh, volunteer to be a poll worker. It's still not too late. I did. I, I did that. And uh, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think it'll be a really cool. Way to, I just think it's going to be a really cool way to connect with my community yeah. in a way I haven't before. So I just I, I went on to um, power the polls. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I, I'm thinking to myself, OK, I'm young. I'm healthy. This is something that I can I can do you know, and, and really make a difference because usually poll workers are much older and they can't do it this year. And then I'm like, okay, well, what are my skills? I speak Spanish. So I, you know, specifically picked communities that have a high Spanish speaking population, you know, and just like thinking, thinking of ways that you and like your unique abilities or experiences or whatever it is, can, what can, what can you do? Like, do you have a car? Can you drive a neighbor? you know, to the polls? Can you, you know, if, if it's legal in your state, can you offer to pick up people's ballots and drop them off? I mean, whatever it is, everyone can do something. And so I think now we're in a moment where it's just all hands on deck. I love that. And for people that don't know, what is so vital about about poll workers? Why do we need poll workers? And why is because there's clearly a shortage that we've been hearing about? Yeah, so if anyone has voted before, you know, there's always the little old ladies who are, who are there like signing you in and, and um, we kind of take them for granted. But poll workers are volunteers. Uh, in most states, they get paid. And um, they're there to keep these poll places open. And in many states, because of the pandemic, um, senior citizens who are not able to do this volunteer work that they usually do. And so they've had a massive shortage and they've had to close a lot of polling, a lot of polling places. You hear horror stories of states, you know, where the lines are 11 hours long or they only have one polling place. A lot of that is due to voter suppression, which is another issue. But, um, you know, we also can't be so cynical and thinking that's the only reason it's also just logistically some counties don't have the manpower to to open 
Right. We're having a bunch of questions come in. By the way, if anyone has yeah. any questions, drop them in the comments or you could, I think, yeah. you could directly. Um, oh, these are great yeah, questions. Yeah, that's what I love about this. I'm all, I'm, you know, we do our videos and stuff, but this is great because we get to, you know, talk <laughs> with, you, with all of you. <laughs> so two things. How did we meet each other? And then what was the most challenging thing we have each experienced this year so far? Ooh. Which one? Okay, do you want to go first? Because I've been talking a lot. No. <laughs> well, want me to? how do we meet each other? We met on Instagram, but also we have a bunch of friends in common. Right? Yeah. So it was a meant to be. Yeah. I don't know. Right? I don't well, know. Because we have, we have a bunch of friends in common. And then we started following each other because we both loved each other's work. And then, yeah. and then I think it was after I did... I did an event with um, one of our mutual friends that you DM'd me and you were like, hey, I'd love to collab. And honestly, another thing I love about Instagram, I have met so many amazing people. Yes. And now during COVID, I have friends that I've literally never met in person. <laughs> and they're genuinely my friends. I know, like this. Like this yeah. is a yeah. genuine friendship. It's amazing. I that's know. the power, that's the beauty of social media, honestly. Not that this is a conversation about social media, but yeah. I think right. if, you're, if you utilize it for activism and for, and for positivity and not just as, I don't know, a mm -hmm. way to compare yourself to other people, it really right. is so powerful. Yeah, I think people look at it as very black and white. Oh, I have to completely shut off my social media or I need to be obsessed with it. And it's, um, you have a lot of agency in, in the way that you, that you use it. And I think a lot of it has to do with attitude. As soon as I changed my, my attitude towards it and being like, oh, this is something I have to do or I hate this. Because I, I work in social media, not just for mine, but I run it for the Institute and for the founder. And it, get, it drains you. But as soon as I changed my attitude and I was like, oh, this is an amazing tool, then it changed everything. And now I, I have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. I agree. And having, it's so funny. Like I was using it before, and I don't know about you, but I was like, I want to do like my wellness routine and like just a, a random picture of me in front of like a pretty background with no substance. Right. And people didn't yes, care. Yes, we talked about this. Right? Yeah. But people don't care. They want to have, I think people, my friend Jara, who's like a brilliant social media strategist, she talks about entertaining, educating, and empowering. And you should fall oh, under one of those three. And then that's how you make an impact. You're not just trying to like yeah. make people jealous, but you're providing value. Right. Well, I, and you're being authentic, right? So mm -hmm. do what you were saying about like my wellness routine, whatever. I, there, I wanted to make these videos, these little, you know, like, history explainer videos for so long but I was too embarrassed I was like oh my gosh people are gonna think I'm so like silly they're gonna laugh at me yeah. um and eventually one day I just kind of I was like you know screw it I'm just gonna go for it because I was and there's nothing wrong with posting you know your workouts or what you're wearing like some people like that's their thing and they do it amazingly well and and there's a space for that but it just wasn't me I just didn't feel like I was really being myself and so now I I'm just doing something that's totally authentic to me. And that's more exciting than like posting my outfits. A hundred percent. And the same for me. It's like, and you find your community yeah. that way. When you are your authentic yeah. self, they come to you, your, your yeah. new friends. Um, yeah. So to answer the question, what was one of the most challenging things you've experienced this year? Oh, that's such a good question. It really, really is. And I feel like I could go really deep or kind of like surface level, but- We go deep. We go deep. Um, yeah, I mean, the hardest thing, um, honestly, and it's still a, um, it's still um, a struggle is uh, not seeing my family because my family's in Spain and Australia. Uh, my grandma's isolating alone. Australia is on complete lockdown. Even me as a citizen, I can't get into the country. And so um, it's been, you know, it's, it sucks. I, I really want to go and, and visit her and I can't right now. Um, that being said, people are going through so many worse things than we are. I'm so grateful everyone's healthy and, you know, we're doing okay. And we've managed to, um, be very creative during this time as well. We probably speak now more than ever. We have family zoom calls where we play trivia. We've done zoom birthdays and, yeah. um, all of us, we've all said that it was probably the best birthday we've ever had. Each one of us. That's really, so, I no. think we are, and we're more aware of how important family is and connecting is. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What, what about you? What was the hardest thing? There's been a few things. I think 
being in New York, so I moved from LA mm. right before the pandemic. So I was experiencing a lot of like mixed feelings. I was in New York City to move. I moved for, from LA to New York to be close to my family and I couldn't see my family. And that was yeah. similarly like, so I feel like I was regretting the move a bit. Like, why did I just move all the way across the country to be isolated in my apartment and I can't see anybody? Yeah. yeah. And being in New York during that time and having a literal like morgue on my block with bodies. Oh my like, God. Like it was, I, like, it, I think a lot of people in cities that have been tremendously impacted have a bit of PTSD, just like walking past yeah. and knowing that's filled with people's, uh, it, yeah, that was traumatizing yeah, yeah. and also just like yeah, personal things sure. I think you sit with yourself more like I have more time to reflect I think I'm and I feel like we're similar I get energized from other people so I was always yeah. like out and seeing people and meeting new people and that was my energy and now I'm forced to sit with myself and like things that yeah. I've avoided and like insecurities and fears have been kind of really bubbling up yeah yeah like so many i mean everyone probably in a way mm -hmm. yeah it's just crazy there is something really powerful in the fact that we're all going through it together yeah you know um mm -hmm. but but yeah that was a great question it's we have two yeah. more coming i don't know if there's ooh. what would you rather regret something you did or something you didn't end up doing Something great. I didn't end up doing for sure. Damn. I mean, without I mean, everything that I regretted doing might have seemed like the end of the world at the time. But when you look back, it's really not that big a deal. I mean, unless you did something really horrible, right? But we're yeah. assuming that no one here is a murderer or something. So, so that's um, so true. And they say like, at the end of your life, the most common regret of people on their deathbed are things they didn't do. It's never the things yeah. they did. For I don't sure. know where that's about. And even even the mistakes, I mean, you learn from the mistakes, even even the hardest experiences that I've gone through. And you know, when I've made really big mistakes, um, that you know, either in my relationships or at work or whatever it is. Um, in looking back, I'm grateful for them. Why is it so important for you to use your voice? Because a lot of people have a platform and not everyone feels compelled to use it in the way that you've been doing it. And I so admire you for it. So what, what in oh, you needs to you. do that? Thank you. So this is, this is something that I, I think about a lot because I have very mixed feelings about it. I actually spoke about this with Ben um, as well, our friend. Um, I, I do it personally because it's important to me it's something that I'm passionate about. I talk about the things that I study, that that I know, um, and that I feel I feel a responsibility. So I'm not going to go out and and um, give an opinion on something that I'm not informed on, mm -hmm. um, or something that isn't really meaningful to me. So I think that there are I don't want to say limits, but in my mind, I guess yeah, there's there are certain limits to how I choose to use my voice. That being said, I, I don't think that just by having a platform, you should feel pressured to use your voice. If this isn't authentic to you, if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't, it, I, I think that, th that all of a sudden there's this kind of, um, there's, this, there's this expectation that um, celebrities all need to take a stance or be politically active. And in my opinion, like, honestly, it would be better if some celebrities stayed quiet, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So that's always been my view. However, and this is what Ben told me, which kind of made me made me rethink it as well. There, there are certain moments where you can't be silent, right? There are certain things that you don't need to be informed and have a degree in political science to be like, this is not right. You know, and so there are there are human things that if you have a platform and you have an audience, you should stand up for what is right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there is a fine line. I don't think every single celebrity or influencer pe person with a following needs to be politically active. But there are certain like human things that that you should do, you know, when in certain circumstances. What was the turning point for you? 
Because I know we've talked um, about it before between like you were voicing opinions, but now definitely more outspoken about certain things than maybe you have in the past. Yeah, it's it's been a struggle for me. It's something that I'm constantly thinking about and questioning because I, when I first started speaking publicly about politics and doing these videos, it was always like, this is just going to be fact-based and informative, and I'm not going to give my political view. And I still, I still um, believe dearly in that because also I don't want to, I don't want to um, isolate people either. I want this to be a conversation and I want to welcome all opinions um, and perspectives. And I want, I want, I don't want anyone to feel like they're being attacked. At the same time, it's getting harder and harder to do that just because uh, so much crazy shit is going on. And um, at some point you just have to, everyone has their, their limits. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for me, you know, I, I, I put, I put um, the Black Lives Matter movement in a completely separate box because to me that's not political at all. Like that's just human. Right. You know, so me coming out and saying I support that, I don't see that as being political. Um, so that was a no brainer. Um, and speaking about the the history of um, racial inequity and and the problems, like these are all facts and these are all things that need to be addressed. I don't see that as political. But then you know, more recently, things um, like um, you know the the threat against Roe v. Wade and the Supreme Court and you know women's rights and healthcare and things like that. I mean, yeah, that's incredibly political, but but anything to do with with women's rights and and abortion, like that. I guess that's that's another line for me that I'm going to cross. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just personal for everyone. And I think if you have a personal connection to it, if you're a woman, if you whatever it might be, that will make you more incentivized to speak about something political that you might have have in the past. Yeah, when, when you have that experience. And another thing that um, that I think um, black activists in specific have been so amazing at, 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 at teaching us and, and making us think in these past few months is about even if you don't necessarily have that experience, use your platform to give it to someone else like just share the mic and exactly. and let and let them speak as well so i obviously don't have experience of what it's like to be black in america but i i'm human and um i know what something is wrong when i see it and then with with the women's rights issues i'm sorry but nothing pisses me off more than some old dude telling me what i can or can't do like that just pisses me off <laughs> I, it's sometimes just so difficult for me to even understand. Like, you literally don't know what this is like. How no, are you telling you me never will. Like? No, it's just no. insane. And as we're leading up to this, like, very contentious election, it's, it saddens me that we are so divided. Like, it's really hard to yeah. even have a civil conversation with people, even if it's that rooted in fact, because people don't even believe facts. Sometimes. Yeah, well, well, people, so people are coming from um, different sources of information, which is a major problem. I listened to a podcast actually last night, which I highly recommend. I'm going to post it after this, actually. Yeah. It's called, um, the pod, it's the most recent podcast from um, an account called Commune. And um, I'll post it in my stories after, but it's called like, Can, Amer Can Americans Ever Like Each Other or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's on the Commune podcast. And, and, um, this woman, I can't remember her name, but she founded the Middle Finger Project, and she's from rural Pennsylvania, and she's kind of dedicated her life as, as a self-proclaimed, like, translator between, like, rural and urban America. Cool. And her, I mean, it's, it's just such an eye-opening, important conversation where I've always tried to approach... Um, any conversation with someone and I'm very comfortable with diversity. I come from a like family all around the world. I have friends all around the world. Like it's very normal for me. I always try to approach a conversation um, from a, from a place of, of like, I always assume the best of someone mm -hmm. until, you know, they, they prove me wrong, but I'm going to assume that you're going to, that you're coming from a good place. And if we start vilifying one another and if we continue on this path, we are, we, we're never, ever going to get anywhere. And so when you talk to someone who, who supports something that you might think is, is atrocious, 
oftentimes, if you actually take the time to really talk to them and connect with them, you'll find like, they're not bad people, you know, and there are reasons why they think what they think. And we need to be empathetic to that. I mm -hmm. think that's the only way that, you know, we'll be able to <laughs> get anything done. And it's such a hard thing because I've spoken to friends in the past and about oh, my dog is jumping. He's dead. Oh, wait, let's see. There he is. Oh, oh hi. He's hi. Hi. He's so chilling. he's hey, like, he's, oh, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, he's like going to try to get back up if I put him down. But people that say, what do I do? My parents are not, you know, we're not wanting the same outcome for the election and we're getting yeah. to heated debates about it. How do I not hate them? <laughs> And yeah, it is so, so hard. And um, I, I, I think I started this with being like, I like, like really hating. And I understand where this anger comes from, especially if you're from a marginalized community. Um, or if you've experienced, you know, any any of these, these kind of traumas that people seem indifferent to, um, or even even, you know, oppositional to. That being said, I mean, it's really, really hard, but we need to find ways to communicate. And I have like two really good recommendations for that. And that is um, that podcast I told you, the commune podcast. And then there's a book called uh, Don't Think of an Elephant um, by George Lakoff, who's a linguist. And he he's all about communication. He basically has it at the, end, at the back of the book. If you're not a reader, just like skim to the back. And it's like a help section how to talk to conservatives. <laughs> no, that's yeah, amazing. I, just, I almost didn't want to say that out loud, but I was like, I'm assuming that we're all in the same, but it's like basically how to talk to your like crazy aunt on Facebook when you're at Thanksgiving together. That's so good. Yeah, yeah, because it's not it's conservatives. So it's honestly, it's not conservative. That was the wrong word to use. It was like your crazy aunt on Facebook, you know? Like, yeah. that's, what, that's what I meant. Wait, we had two other things come in. Yeah. Oh. Hey, yeah. That's someone wrote, what's our favorite season of the year? <laughs> That's a cute question. Ooh, um, look, I love the changes, to be honest, but I like fall right now. Love it's fall. so beautiful in LA right now. Is it? It's so, so, yeah, it's really nice. I love fall too. It's something very cozy. It feels like a metamorphosis, like so much, like you feel change. There's opportunity. Yeah. I yeah. agree. The air is like crisp. I don't know. There's mm -hmm. Honestly, I spent a fall in upstate New York and it was one of the most beautiful yeah. places. Where? Like, times. It, I was in Rochester. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it was so beautiful in October. I mean, it was, yeah, it was beautiful. Okay, no yeah. Good. How's yeah. New York right now? It's beautiful. I mean, not an anarchist establishment as one might okay think. that's good to know that's well, wait, what is it called an anarchy what do they call it an anarchist jurisdiction oh okay yeah yeah <laughs> no it's the, beautiful the radical left <laughs> yeah no it's been it's been really nice like it feels it's kind of like the calm before the storm we know it's going to get cold and it's going to be harder to be social yeah. outside so i think people are really taking advantage of yeah. this like nice weather yeah for sure what oh, well, so before we wrap, what what are any like last minute proclamations we want to tell our friends? What do we want from them? What yeah. what are some motivations we can provide, et cetera? Yeah, I have a few voting tips and things that Please. I learned along the way. So uh, the first is obviously vote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please. However, if you can vote in person, do it because mm -hmm. Because we know we know about like the mail in the there it's going to be legitimate. They do not be concerned that there are any problems with mail in voting. But we want to try to ease the burden off the post office as much as we can. So if you're healthy and young and you have a voting place nearby and you're given the day off work, just um, do that so that you know someone else you know who can't get the day off and is a single mom with kids. I don't know, like just um, so that she can send in her ballot by mail. Yeah. Then when you're filling out the ballot, if you are either um, doing it at home or in person, don't be overwhelmed. This is a big thing that isn't talked about often, um, but it's just personal to me that when you're reading through these ballot measures, you're like, what the fuck is this? Like, like I've, I'm like, re I'm like skimming through the book that they send you, you know, yeah. the person, I'm like Google, going online. Um, my friend has an amazing website, by the way, called, 
um, know your vote. Um, and I'm like, I'm researching, I'm researching the measures through that. But don't be overwhelmed. If there's something that you don't understand that you don't think that you should have an opinion on, because I feel that way on a lot of these measures, leave it blank. Like, it's fine. You don't need to answer every single one. Vote on the things that are, um, that, you know, vote for the people that you want to put in power in, in your local community. Vote on the issues that you feel most passionate about and really educate yourself on those. And um, if, if you have the time to really go deep and you want to do every single one, that's amazing. But don't feel the pressure to answer every single one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't hear that enough. And, and I just, I feel like that's really important to that's say. Really helpful. Um, and then, and then the last thing is my friends know your vote uh, website. They have, um, they have a feature there called build your ballot and you can, it's like a sample ballot and it's all, it gives it, each measure and each candidate, you know, it gives you all of this nonpartisan information wow. and you can just kind of plug and play and um, it will, it will give you a printout of a sample ballot that you can then take to the polling place. Um, and you've kind of like, it helps you do all the research. It's amazing. That's incredible. I didn't even know yeah, that. Yeah, it's I really know your vote. I'll actually type it in down here. Yeah, Everywhere. know your vote is incredible. Yeah, they're, they're doing such awesome work. It's, you know, female founded, a new, mm -hmm. you know, a new company, just like really trying to do really, um, I shouldn't say company, it's like a, you know, a, what do you call it, like a nonprofit or a yeah. social, social impact, whatever. Anyway, new, new site, and they're doing amazing, amazing work, and I'm so proud of them. And also so, know that you can vote early in certain places. Like you can yeah. vote today, not just now yeah, there, but actually voting early. So that's yeah, an important I mean, thing Texas to know. Texas has had record numbers of voters already, yeah. you know? So, and, and then also don't be discouraged and make it fun. Um, this, this, um, another, another, um, activist I know, she's amazing. She's called Kat, Cal her name is Kat Calvin. She founded mm -hmm. Spread the Vote. She talks about um, voting parties and how you can just like on Zoom, get together with your friends, pour some wine and like make it fun. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, like we have the opportunity to make decisions that are going to affect our lives, our communities, our future. That's really, that should be really exciting. And so make it fun, make it a part of your life, just like you need to go to the gas station or you need to go to the grocery store. Like this is just something that you have to do every two years, not every four <laughs> and um, make it fun. Yeah. And also phone banking for me has been an amazing way to Ooh. feel. I'm hosting a phone bank tonight with women okay. for Biden, even though this is mostly a nonpartisan conversation, but if you're so no, fine, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna post it in my stories after this, but it's with the Biden campaign, and I'm really excited. So that that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Good. good and you talk you. to people, and it's like sometimes you get hung up on, but for me, it's a great way to forge connections. A lot of people have questions; they don't know that they can vote early. They don't know how to fill yeah. in an absentee vote. So you really encourage people and empower them to use their voice. Yeah. So I highly, yeah, highly recommend phone banking. Um, that's super, that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's such also a, such a great way to connect with people. And when you talk to people, I mean, we're so, we're so connected, but we're also so isolated and we don't really yeah. know, you know, our own community members. So I think that's really cool. That's what I'm excited about being a poll worker, get, you know, just like meeting people in, in the community and um, being yeah. a part of, of the community. Uh, I remember actually in 2016, it was my first uh, election that I could vote because I'd just become a citizen. And uh, I canvassed. I went door to door, like knocking on the door. <laughs> and it was fun. I mean, it was just a fun thing to do one afternoon. Knowing that you have an actual, like, superpower. This is a superpower. The ability to cast it a vote is. is such a gift. So we should it use is. it and not take it for granted. I have, and also talk to your friends and family, because you will be surprised a lot of people aren't going to vote and aren't interested yeah. in voting. So I actually talked to a friend, they weren't voting, and I, after a 35 minute conversation, I encouraged them to register. They no, were going awesome. to. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so if everyone on this call can get one person to vote exactly. this week, that would be, that would be yeah, I how, how did that feel? It took you 35 minutes? <sighs> yeah, it was a lot. It was a what long. What do you think it was that finally, you know, did it? I said, do it for the women in your life. I said, you, I said, if it's not about you, because the thing that's interesting to me is like, they don't like the candidates. 
but it's, I think it's weighing. No one is going to be a perfect candidate. It's not possible. Yeah. There's not one yeah. uniform person for everybody. It's, it's just not how this country is run and not everyone's going to agree. Yeah. But who are you most to bad. It would be bad if, if yeah, it that way, right? Exactly. And it felt really good, but it also kind of scared me because I, if he is somebody that like is really smart and really well read and all these things, but didn't think his vote mattered, how many other people feel that way? So, oh, just so many. I, I have right. so many friends um, who are so smart and mm -hmm. and care, but they are. Um, indifferent they think yes. you know they they don't think the system you know is works for them or they're just like i'm in california what's the point you know because of the electoral college but we have to also think it's not just the president we're we're voting for our local officials who in many many ways impact our lives more than the president and by the way like i've been really petitioning hard for jamie harrison who's amazing in south carolina and uh -huh. so I've been uh -huh. doing phone banks for him. So highly recommend, like, so you can adopt a state. So you don't have to just yeah. do it for the presidency. If you feel really empowered, if you feel excited by a candidate in a different state, you can actually phone bank for those states as well. So that's, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I heard actually just yesterday or the day before that uh, Lindsey Graham's uh, um, rival is that it's yeah, that's Jamie Harrison. Yep, that's her. That, that's what I thought. Yes, she's she just raised the most money that any congressional nominee has ever raised in the history of elections. He, so it's in he. history. Yes. And oh, he, sorry. He, I know it's, it's gender neutral, but yeah. Okay. That's I just heard it. Um, on that, that yeah. Lindsey Graham's competitor raised the most. That is insane. I know. You know that's yeah. incredible. And it just shows what power we have. Mm -hmm. So we should never be um, indifferent. And oftentimes, certain counties are a, are a matter of votes, not hundreds, but like a handful. Yeah. So just yeah. we have power. Everybody, yeah. feel, I hope you walk away feeling really excited from this conversation. We're very enthusiastic. Yeah. Said, Why are you yelling? We're like, because we're yeah. excited. If we're not yeah, yelling, we are. we're crying. And that's, what I'm, and, that's what, and that's what we want to pass on to everyone mm -hmm. watching yeah. now or watching later. Mm -hmm. um, it's exciting. This is so cool that we get to do this. Yeah, so we're really lucky. And this is a privilege to vote because not everyone has the ability to vote even who No, and I country. mean, we wouldn't have been able to, you know, a few generations ago, Correct. you know, and people people like, people really fought and gave up a lot sacrificed a lot in order for us to get to do this. So yep. uh, we should we shouldn't take it for granted at all. And make them proud. Absolutely. Make them proud. You're amazing, Natalia. I love you. you. You're so special. Thank you for what you oh. do and inspiring so many people. You're no, thank you. Thank you for inspiring and educating, but also making us laugh because God knows we need it. So. Thank you. I love so. you. We'll speak love soon. You. Bye, everyone. Please register, vote, talk to your friends and family, and stay safe. Yes, okay. I, will, I will put all of those references. I just follow my yes. stories next. So. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye, 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 everybody. Thanks for tuning in.